How many of you have had a baking disaster where your cake just refused to rise? When I was first born, my parents both gave me cake recipes. They were both relatively similar, but they did have their own quirks. For instance, my dad's questionable choice of icing. Regardless, I decided it would be nice to pass on my own recipe to my kids. But before I did so, I got a bit creative in the kitchen, mixing up instructions and ingredients between my two recipes, meaning that in actual fact, each of my kids inherited a unique reassortment of my parents' original recipes. Now actually, a very similar process happens in the cells that go on to produce your eggs and sperm. It's known as meiotic recombination, and essentially, it acts like a physical cut and paste tool, exchanging chunks of information between the genetic recipes which you inherited from your parents, meaning that the instructions that you pass on to your kids are not quite the same as those which you inherited from your parents. But with all this cutting and pasting, how do we safeguard the integrity of our genetic recipes? If recombination happens at the wrong time, the wrong place, the wrong frequency, then you'll probably end up with a genetic recipe where your cake just won't rise. What I'm really interested in looking at is how the DNA itself regulates recombination. If we were to zoom in on this DNA, we would actually find that it's very much like a piece of string that loops in and out on itself, so much so that it packages up into structures known as chromosomes. But it's the looping that's important. For instance, one gene might have shorter loops, and as a consequence, is more likely to undergo recombination than a gene with longer loops. Therefore, by mapping this loop structure all the way along chromosomes, we can begin to understand more about where recombination is allowed to occur, what genetic information is being exchanged, and ultimately, how our genetic recipes are evolving over time. Now, I know that some people believe that evolution is irrelevant to the modern human species, but consider climate change, antibiotic resistance, or the aging population. Each of those issues will be overcome by change, and our bodies are helping us do that. With processes including recombination, we increase the likelihood of creating new beneficial genetic recipes, which could subdue the effects of aging, improve our tolerance to air pollution, or defeat those lethal bacterial infections. Meaning that by studying recombination, we can understand more about human evolution and survival, evolving from a relatively bland Victoria sponge to a much more magnificent Black Forest Gatto. Thank you.